Hello, everybody, and welcome back. We're back for another TCG talk, and today, well, let's see what we're going to talk about. We've talked about the theme, we've talked about topic, we talked about wind conditions. We could talk about effects, but I think I promised you guys a resource uh, video, so let's talk about resources in a trading card game. And this can pretty much apply to other games as well. Uh, certain aspects are going to be applicable. But again, we're going to be focusing in on those TCGs, trading card games, CCGs, collectible card games, etc, etc. So what is resource? When you play a game, resource is the way to essentially pay for card effects. So if a game has a resource system, the resource system is designed to pace the game by allowing some cards to be played easily, some cards to be played less easily and therefore need to be played later on in the game by adding these resources, this system that affects play. A good example of this is, comes from the first trading card game, which is Magic. Lands are the resource system, or mana is the resource system, really. And that system essentially uses, well, you pay for cards using mana. And mana has different colors, and so... When you play a land, you tap the land, and now you have one mana, and then next turn you probably are playing another land, then so you have two mana, etc, etc. So there is that growing resource system or reusable resource system, such as magic. There are single-use resource systems, such as card as resource. Card as resource is a style of resource system where every card in play or every card in the deck has a resource system or has a resource value alongside them. So it would be like imagine that you're playing magic and you have a bear and your bear card also counts as a forest. So you could play your bear as a forest card. Card as resource can be used like magic does where it is a linear system where essentially you play a land, you play a land, you play a land, and over time you have more lands to, to tap and use. Or it can be single use where you play that card to pay for a cost. So you sacrifice this really expensive card, but it gives you lots of points to then play another semi-expensive card into play. That is an example of card resource systems. Then uh, we have single use resource systems, which I think we were already talking about. But single use is essentially there are resources, but they can only be used once. Prime example is going to be the Pokemon trading card game, where you have energy cards, and when you play the energy cards, they get attached to your Pokemon. When your Pokemon's knocked out, you lose those resource cards. But as long as they're attached to the Pokemon, they count towards the cost of using abilities. We've seen this in the Hermitcraft trading card game, actually, which uh, with one of the recent videos, if you want to take a look, there'll be probably something in the at the end of the video, or maybe a, a card. I'll see if I if I get to putting it in. So we have linear resource system, such as mana, such as magic, such as Hearthstone. We have single use resource system where resources are used one time, and then. There are ways to implement resources. Uh, well, then there's actually let's say let, before we get into how to re implement resources, let's get into the final technical resource system, which is no resource system. <laughs> and the prime example of a non-resource system system is Yu-Gi-Oh. Right in Yu-Gi-Oh, you can play a mon, you can summon a monster once per turn, special summon. Once per turn, I believe. It's been a while since I played Yu-Gi-Oh! But essentially, you don't need to pay money to play a card. So a 1 star, 100, 100 mummy can be played at the same amount as um, oh, uh, Exodia. It's been a long time since I played Yu-Gi-Oh! I don't remember my cards. Karibo, Karibo costs as much to play as Blue Eyes right, White Dragon, kind of. It's not perfect. Uh, it's not exactly no resource, because you can sacrifice monsters to play higher level monsters. 
But Yu-Gi-Oh! has so many mechanics that just allow you to play all sorts of cards at once. There really isn't a cost system. There isn't a resource system to play cards in any such form. And that's not a bad thing, but it's different. So let's circle back to the other resources systems first, and then we're going to talk about pros and cons of each one. So if you have a resource system, how do you implement resources? So we've already talked about one of them, which is card as resource, where the cards are resource cards. This is kind of a reaction to games such as Magic and Pokemon, which were the first, some of the earlier TCG games, and they have resource cards. Resource cards are like your lands, they're like your energy cards. Essentially, these are cards that are used in the game, and they take up space in your deck. You have to give away the ability to play other sorts of cards by putting these in. And it kind of sucks when you're building a deck, and it sucks if you can't seem to draw any of them, or if you keep drawing them and you don't need any. You need a really good monster, or you need a Pokemon to actually hit your opponent. So that was sort of the, well, if we want to get rid of this, we can use card as resource, which has pros and cons. Uh, it has a lot more pros than cons, at least in my opinion, uh, especially since it, get, it allows you to play more cards. All of your cards can be used to pay for things, and it cuts stuff out. The only downside really is you have to sometimes consider if you're willing to sacrifice a card to be used as a cost than playing it, but that actually kind of makes the game more interesting. Uh, so it's an interesting system. There are There is another set where you can have your resources that aren't attached to your game as a card. So no cards as resource, kind of. I guess a good example would be Hearthstone, right? In Hearthstone, you just rack up your point value every turn, and you get more points each turn. That's it. You aren't playing cards, it's just linear. It's nice, it's consistent, but it does kind of prevent you from ramping up, expanding quickly, at least in the Hearthstone design. You can implement this in other ways. For example, the trading card game that I've been working on, Historia, uses a non-card resource system, kind of. The implementation is essentially, you play characters, such as a poet, and you can not tap, because tap is copyrighted, but essentially, you know, exert, tap, turn the card sideways, and use it, and get a culture point. And my game's interesting because essentially what we're doing is we're linking um, my, your life, as the resource, but instead your point system, because my game uses points as a win condition. So you need to get 20 points in one of three categories, but you can spend those points to play better cards. It's a system being developed. I don't know how I feel about it. I don't know how it runs fully yet, but you can play around with resource systems. They don't need to just be cards, no cards. Geez, life as resource. Think about it. There are lots of cards in any life-based system, where essentially it's like, oh, by playing this card, you pay X amount of life. If all your cards cost life, then it'll be interesting about how you want to do the resources. Or, oh my goodness, here's another good resource system that I just remembered. The Digimon trading card game. That's right. Never played it, but I do know the system. And the system is that there is essentially, you play your cards and your cards have costs, and there's a board. It's like a middle point of, you know, you have zero resources, and then here's your resources, and then here's your opponents. And every cost that you do, you move towards zero. And as soon as you hit zero or move past zero, it's now your opponent's turn. So you can play big cards. It's going to cost you a lot, and you might give your opponent lots more points to use against you on the next turn. Kind of works really well for balancing. I think it's a very interesting system, very unique and definitely could be could be used elsewhere. And yeah, so a resource system does not necessarily need to be card based at all. These are a few options that you can look at and you can generate your own. My goodness, I came up with my one on the on the spot of oh, how are we going to 
pay for these more expensive cards. Well, I don't have a resource card in my game, and I don't want to do what Yu-Gi-Oh did, uh, where essentially, you know, I want to play a higher power monster, so I have to sacrifice these monsters to play that. It's interesting. Essentially, resource systems are interesting and flexible. You can design them however to fit your game, but be careful because resource systems predominantly are designed to pace your game. If you want a fast game, maybe design a looser, easier resource system similar to Yu-Gi-Oh's, right? Where you can blitz through the game in no time. Or if you want a very long game, then you need a slower resource system. Your resource system should, you know, copy elements uh, and theme of your game. Again, if you're interested in theme and topic, take a look at a uh, video that we did on that. But it does not... But the most important thing, the most important thing is it's effective and it has good pacing. Some games fail because the resource systems are just horrible. So be careful and you'll probably be fine. And lastly, let's talk about Yu-Gi-Oh a little bit, right? Yu-Gi-Oh is funky. It is a very successful game that has no resource system. But it has this due to some of the, the facts that it kind of tried to make card as resource, where the card is your creatures and then you pay with the other creatures. It's interesting. How do you pace this sort of system? Well, essentially the best way to do it is to put a limit on card play of certain types of cards. Yu-Gi-Oh has this, but the game has evolved in such a way that it is so easy to special summon, synchro summon, all sorts of cards quickly in that it doesn't really matter anymore. So an example of one that does kind of use this would be Pokemon, because I'm very familiar with Pokemon, right? Where you can bring as many Pokemon into play into your bench, but um, there are trainer cards. And if you use a supporter trainer card, you can only use one supporter trainer card per turn because they're very strong, but the other ones you can play as many as you'd like. So if you want to use a system that doesn't have a resource system, or if you want an aspect of your game to not rely on a resource system, because mind you, right, when you're talking about Pokemon, Pokemon has a resource system for attacks, but for Pokemon playing or for playing other cards that don't use those, what sort of system would you like for that? You can just limit the amount that is played every turn, and that way it'll prevent someone from, you know, play a card that gives you another turn, and then on the next turn play another card, or on the same turn play three cards that give them five more turns, and then play a bunch of cards that deal extra damage to your opponent and wipe the board and win, it, and be and like have the game end by turn two, right? Nobody likes it if the game ends at turn two. Well, okay, some people like it when the game ends at turn two, but most of the time, people like to be able to play their cards and enjoy their game. Hopefully this talk on resource systems has been helpful. I know it was a little bit scattered, we kind of jumped all over the place. But essentially, let's summarize what we've learned. So, a resource system is designed to pace a game, or to pace an aspect of a game. Games can have multiple different resource systems, but there are some staples that are worth noting. Card as resource it can involve... Res Card as resource uses cards as that you play as resource cards as well. And you have the option to either play them or to use them as resource cards. There is the resource card system where cards in your deck are used as resource and that's really their only ability or the majority of their ability. And that can, you know, you can play with that such as magics, lands that can also be used to cycle, to cycle and draw cards, anything. Anyways, uh, you can have no resource system, but if you have no resource system for a certain aspect of your game, consider putting in rules to limit the amount of cards that can be played of that type so that the game doesn't end very quickly. That's everything you need to know on resource systems. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments below. If you have any recommendations for the next video, leave them down below. Uh, I'm probably going to start to jump into card effects, common card effects, common features of trading card games, 
in the next few ones. And with, uh, with that, if you would like to support the channel, leave a like. Hit that subscribe button with a mallet or something just big and heavy. <laughs> Smash it into the ground. Just hit it with a thunderbolt. And it would be very appreciated. It helps the channel grow. Helps me know what you would like to see more of. And until next time, have a good one.